Hey guys, just a quick disclaimer before this video starts. The downloader instructions are at the end of the video. I missed them at the beginning, but I did include them at the end. So if you want to download this OS and take it for a test drive, it's at the end of the video. Hey everybody, hope you're having an awesome day today. Before we get started with today's video, I want to thank everybody. We hit 17,000 subscribers. You guys really don't understand what this means to me. Thank you so much. It is awesome. Now, you can also become a member to the channel for just 99 cents. What I'm doing is I'm taking the MVP, VIP, and Pro memberships, and at the beginning of the year, those will disappear, and all of the perks there will transfer over to the EBA Central member, which is only 99 cents a month. Good way to support the channel and support the content you like. A big thank you to my newest eBuzz member, which is Laura Smith. Thank you so much for joining the channel. And everybody else that's joined in the last 30 days, you just don't understand what this means to me. Thank you guys so much. It makes me understand that the content that I'm creating is being appreciated, and the information that I'm giving you is definitely something that you enjoy. Out of the over 300 videos I've done within the last 12 months, I've only done two different distributions that were immutable. These distributions have the ability to, once you set them up, turn them into a read-only, and then that way nothing nefarious can be inserted into that operating system. It's locked down. But what if you could take an operating system like that and actually install applications in containers in an immutable system, but still be able to do that? That's what I think is really neat about this next OS we're going to cover today, which is Vanilla OS. Vanilla OS, I've been hearing a lot about it lately. I've been over to the GitHub page. I've been reading a lot of the updates. But this is what I truly believe we're going to see in future Linux distribution. I think people are going to lean more to the immutable for the simple fact that you can get your system set up and not have to worry about breaking it. Now, I know there are a lot of operating systems out there that you don't have any issues with. But every now and then, you do get one that you do something and it breaks, and then you've got to start all over because you can't really fix it. But Vanilla OS is in beta access right now. I'm going to show you how to get it here shortly. But first, this is their website, which is vanillaos.org. I will be sure to include that link in the description below. Now it comes down here. It says, what is Vanilla OS? So let's scroll down. It says, nicely updated, designed to last over time and always be faithful to you. Vanilla OS is an Ubuntu Linux-based point release distribution that receives updates at the right time, neither before nor after without sacrificing security and functionality. Now, what they've done is they've cut a lot of the Ubuntu stuff out of it, which I really like. And let's go ahead and scroll down here. It says, Work, your faithful colleague by day. It's designed to be a reliable and productive operating system for your daily work. It comes with the GNOME desktop environment. And thanks to a wide range of applications, Vanilla OS is ready to meet your needs. And then down here, it talks about gaming. It says your teammate by night, play your favorite video games without worrying about setting up your devices. Vanilla OS offers the latest Linux kernel, ensuring support with the latest devices and the latest performance improvements. And it's got an integrated driver manager. Your GPU will no longer be a problem, whether it's AMD, Intel, or NVIDIA. If something is missing, just open the driver manager and follow the suggestions. It's that simple. And then we come down here. It says complete access to a large catalog of applications. Choice. Vanilla OS is an operating system that respects your choices. You are in control always. At the first start, you can choose which package format to use in Vanilla OS, whether it be Flatpak, Snap, or App Image. You choose, and Vanilla OS will take care of the rest, putting you in the situation to start out without problems. And then Immutable. This is where it comes in handy, and I'm going to show you a real neat trick, or not necessarily a trick, but something that we're doing with this operating system that is a little different than others. It's Immutable, but also it's not. Let me explain. Vanilla OS is an on-demand Immutable distribution. The system is read only to prevent unwanted changes and corruption from third-party applications or faulty updates. Some paths are still writable, such as the home directory. This allows the user to keep their files and ensure the normal functioning of applications. But it says, do you have to make changes to your system? No problem. This is where on-demand immutability comes in. You can temporarily make the system writable, make the changes you need, and then return to its original state. But what I really want to show you right here is let's go over here. It's got your frequently asked questions. Immutability, 
Almost. Almost is a utility for on-demand immutability based on the immutability attribute of the files. So basically what's saying is you can have your system locked down, but then turn it off temporarily to make changes that you need to make, and then go back and lock it back down, and you're good to go. Now, they do have the package manager, APX. It is a package manager that allows you to install and manage packages in a managed container without affecting the host system. Occasionally, it is possible to use APX to install packages on the host system as well. But the beauty of this is, is if your system is set up as immutable, you can download packages through APX and still install them because they're putting them in a container and it won't affect your immutable system. That right there, I think, is awesome. You can get your system set up to where you want it, lock it down, and then still have access to packages that you want to use. Now, what I want to do is scroll up here real quick. Let's go back. Then we can come down a little bit more. It says free and open source. You don't have to, and you will never have to pay. And then frequently asked questions. Now let's scroll back up to the top. And what I want to do right now is let's go ahead and get on over to the desktop. Now we get the vanilla splash screen at boot. And to be quite honest, I have ran Ubuntu and Linux Mint and things like that in a virtual environment, and they seem to boot very slow. For some reason, this one boots extremely quick. And when it pops up, it's going to have a console open, and then it's going to have the try vanilla and install vanilla. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close the console, and we'll go ahead and click on this, and we're going to go ahead and click try vanilla. Now, instead of having to wait for it to boot up into where you can try it, you're there. You're good to go. Once you click try, it opens up and you're ready to go. Like I said, this seems to be a lot lighter and a lot less slower than, let's say, an Ubuntu or an Linux Mint booting up. Let's go ahead and look at something real quick. Let's go ahead and open that up and let's tip top. And we're running about 843 megs out of the three gigs I have issued to it, which is pretty normal for a GNOME desktop. Now, I'm going to go ahead and close right here. And it's the newest GNOME, it's GNOME 43, as you can tell by the newest launch area up here. You have power, settings, of course, screenshots right here, battery level, volume. Then you've got wired, Bluetooth, dark mode, nightlight, airplane mode. If you click on dark mode, it'll change it from right there. I think I like that. I'm going to leave that right there. Now, I'm going to go ahead and back out of that. I'm not going to get too in-depth with GNOME 43 because I've done a lot of videos on it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit super key. Let's bring this up. You've got vanilla OS installer. Now, if you click on that, it brings up this right here. Try it or install it. I'm going to go ahead and click install so you can kind of see what they're using. You can search for your language right here. It's English. I'm going to go ahead and keep that. Keyboard layout is English. I'll go ahead and keep that. And then right here, you can search for your time zone. Let me go ahead and just put in Chicago, America, Chicago. There we go. That's good to go. Let's go ahead and click next. Then you can select your disk here. Let's go ahead and configure. But because I'm in a virtual machine, it's not going to let me do that. Right here, you'd put that information in, pick your disk, and then, of course, your name, username, password, and then it would install. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of this and close it. Let's go back to try. So that's just a quick look at the installer. And then you have GNOME Web as your web browser. I like GNOME Web, but it's going to be a little less feature-rich than, let's say, a Firefox or uh, Vivaldi, Chrome, whatever you might be using. But it's pretty good. You can go up here and you can type into it, eBuzz Central, and go ahead and put that in. It will it is using Google as a search engine, and it brings your searches up right there. But you can always install another web browser if you want to. So let's go ahead and close out of that. You do have Photos. You have File Manager, which is your files, which comes with GNOME 43. I like the icon theme. It's not one of my favorites, but it's not one of my ones I don't like. I would probably change the colors here, but that's completely up to you. You can do whatever you need to do to make it fit your needs and what you're going to use it for. you got your usual suspects over here, and of course, you've got your home folder right here. So let's go ahead and close out of that. Let's go ahead and hit super key. You've got your software center. Let's go ahead and open that up. And it's going to look like any other software center you've used. Now, it looks like you got a problem with the thumbnail here, but it is in beta. So you're going to have a few of these things stick out. It's going to have installed and, of course, your updates over here. Then you can explore and pick different applications down here that you want to install. It's pretty much that simple. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you've got help, file manager we've already looked at. Let's go ahead and open this up. 
You've got your GNOME extension manager right here. You're probably very familiar with that. Gparted, music, your software and updates, and then of course your vanilla beta notice. Go ahead and open this up and take a look at it. It's got some information in here I think you need to read, and it lets you know right here, if you're reading this, you're probably a tester or a developer, so thank you for your interest in vanilla OS. Please read the following carefully. Known issues. The installer may freeze. Don't worry, it's still working and we'll finish the installation. They're going to replace it with Jade, a cool GTK4 Libweta installer. Ubuntu packages can't be installed from GNOME software if the immutability of the system is enabled. So you have immutability. If it's turned on, you're not going to be able to install software unless you use APX instead. We will remove the ability to install Ubuntu packages from GNOME software entirely before the open beta is released. And then suggested tests. They give you some things to go in there and try it out and kind of get used to the feel of vanilla OS. Now what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to go ahead and close this. Let's super key. Come back down. We just looked at that. Here's your vanilla OS control center. Let's open that up. And right here you're going to have loading drivers. Please wait while we find the available drivers. I am in a virtual machine, so all it's going to give me is VirtualBox. Let's say you have AMD, Intel, NVIDIA. This is where the drivers will pop up, and it'll say, here's where you need to install your drivers. You pick those drivers, click on it, install them, and you're good to go. Immutability, right here. Immutability status on the current session, it's shut off. I'm in the read and write mode, okay? If you click this on, it would go to the read-only mode, and once you restart it would only read and you couldn't write to the disk or the system. And then you could of course restore on reboot and then default mode is read only and then overlays, you don't have any of those, but you can create them as you go. Subsystem, installed applications on your subsystem would show up right here. So let's go ahead and close out of that. That's a really great tool. Let's come down here, vanilla OS first setup. If you click on that, Let's see if it even comes up because I am in a live mode. I don't even know if it's going to offer it to me. And it didn't. It just closed out. So I'm not surprised about that. And then you've got your video application, system monitor, settings. Your settings are going to be like any other GNOME 43 environment. It's got everything down here. Let's go look at about. And it lets you know this is vanilla OS. Hardware model is, of course, VirtualBox. RAM, software rendering, X11 window manager, GNOME version 43. It is vanilla OS 2210 unstable. So let's go ahead and close out of that. We'll go ahead and open this back up. Go over here, utilities, you've got disks and archive manager. So let's go ahead and back out of that. Let's go to the base screen and you can change your backgrounds right here. Let me go ahead and pull that up and let's take a look at a different background. Let's go to the top. Uh, let's go with something like that. And it changes over to that, so it changes pretty quick. And then, of course, if you come up here and turn it on light mode, the background will change with it. So that's pretty sweet. I have high hopes for vanilla OS. I think the, the fact that you can get it installed the way you want it, get everything in place, and then enable immutability where nothing else can go into that system and make changes, I think that gives you greater control over your Linux operating system. I think that gives you greater security and privacy over your Linux system. And I think it's really a great idea. I really want to give this a shot once it goes into open beta and it's not in an unstable mode. But if you want to go check this out, I'm going to have to show you how to do this because it's kind of tricky to get it downloaded. So let's sit back on over to their website. When you get to their website, to get beta access from the website, you click here. And it's going to ask you to join their Discord server. If you want to accept the invite, you can. And once you accept that invite, which I have already accepted in the past, it'll start loading Discord. Let's go ahead and close out of that. And if you go down here, it says there are no recent messages. But if you click where it says 22 messages, click on that. This opens up over here. Click Start Here. And it'll say Vanilla OS slash OS. Let's go ahead and go to that website. Now, once you get here, you see it's Vanilla OS, DAS OS. It'll say Vanilla OS Kinetic. Go ahead and click on that. And it's going to open this page up. Once it opens that page up, 
You'll look right down here. It'll say Vanilla OS 22.10, 1.61 1 gigabytes. Once you download it, it is in a zip file. Right-click, extract it. It'll extract it to a folder. Then you can burn it to a USB, or you can open it into a virtual machine. That's how easy it is. I think everybody should take a look at it. It's really quick. It's really snappy. They got rid of a lot of the junk that Ubuntu does put in there. But the security and privacy this OS is going to offer in the future is just going to be something I think can attract more people to use it, especially Linux users that are looking for an alternative to what they're using right now. What do you think? Is it something you might download, throw on a USB, put in a virtual machine and take for a test drive? Let me know in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video, if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms, YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only 99 cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee, maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.